Hello and welcome again. Uh, this presentation uh, is with World Copper. Uh, I have with me uh, Hank Van Alpen, who is the CEO of the company. Uh, so without further ado, Hank, please tell us all about World Copper. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for having us on. Um, and also, whoever is uh, out there listening to us, thank you very much for uh, taking the time. Um, I have no control over the, uh, the deck that is out there in front of us, so I will have to go switch around a little bit, so maybe a little bit sort of uh, hit the miss here. But um, I let me go into how Wealth Copper started. I start with that all the time, and whoever has heard this is probably tired of me telling it. But I got involved in uh, Chile about four years ago in the lithium business with a guy called Marcelo Awad, who used to be the CEO of Antofagasta Minerals, which is probably the second largest copper producer in in uh, Chile. So um, every time I used to go traveling with this gentleman, people always use, why don't you have a copper company when you have the best copper CEO on, on, in the world on your, on your side? So that's how this world copper really was born and the way it was set up in terms of share structure. So we can maybe talk about that afterwards. The, um, we can maybe start flipping to the next pages. The, the next one will be the disclaimer, which we won't be dwelling on too much. There we go. Um, just keep on the flip, uh, just flipping the pages a little bit more. Yes, the next one. Okay, so here we have uh, basically, no, just go back once, sorry. Um, basically, uh, three people here that are, you know, off the team that are sort of uh, pointed out, Marcelo Awad, as I pointed out, ex-CEO of Antofagasta Minerals, under his leadership, and the Vagasta went to a uh, about a twenty billion dollar company. So this man has a lot of uh, friends around the investment world, mainly in London, since it's on the FTSE 100. Uh, Roberto Ferrao joined us as a director. He is the ex VP of Exploration for Codelco. Codelco being the largest copper company in the world. Patrick Burns, who actually sits next to me, and he's going to say a few words about the projects after I finish the introduction here, but he's been in Chile for the last 40 years and was involved in the discovery of this small copper mine called Escondida. Um, if you could just flip to the next one. Um, we're going to, I'm not going to spend too much time. Just keep on flipping until I say stop. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on copper because I think most people that I've talked to are actually believing like I do. Stop at this one. Stop at this one. This is actually an interesting one. Uh, that copper, no, go back, go back one. Yeah. Uh, that copper has an enormous future in the world. And that has to do obviously with this picture that you see now with the electric car business, uh, infrastructure, Go back to the one before this. I, I saw this article actually about a couple of weeks ago whereby it claims that the demand for copper is going to reach 80 million tons per year. To this, this year, it's around 25 million tons of copper. So it's going to go up by about 55 million tons in the next 30 years. And that's going to be an enormous difficulty for the mining industry to keep up with. And I think this is a very, very important uh, uh, slide here because it's going to be very tough to find these kind of copper deposits. And that's why I think you really want to be in the copper business today. Um, you know, it's obvious, you know, it's obvious that everybody's running around with gold, but if you look at the, if you look for a commodity for the next three, four, five years where you want to be the night, copper has to be the place where you want to be. So just uh, flip for the next one, please. Um, I will, well, copper, obviously, this is actually one of Robert Friedland's fa uh, fa favorite uh, things to talk about, how copper actually is very good and it kills bacteria. So it's, it's going to be part of the future use of copper. The one thing that I actually find interesting, what's happening, luckily we're talking about copper now, um, is that, 
Uh, the, the price of copper actually is coming back to well over $3. It was $3.20 yesterday. And this is in, in, in a world which is completely full of pandemic. So the only country really in, in, in the world today that is actually back in business and not to the full extent either is China. So while we have this enormous pandemic in the world, Copper has has managed to climb its way all the way back to three dollars and twenty cents before before the world goes back to work. So I would say that once this pandemic is over with, which let's say is going to be happening at some point next year, copper is going to be in enormous demand, and this would be the time to get into a copper play. So uh, next page, please. No, Chile, obviously, if you want to be in the copper space, you know, Chile is obviously the, the, the best place in the world for, for copper. So it's obvious that we, that we pick Chile, but that's also somewhat to do with the people that are around this deal, involved in this deal. So Chile is the obvious uh, target for us. Next, uh, keep on going. Um, here we... Uh, sort of, you know, you see Marcelo Awad on the top left, Patrick Burtz on the top right. Uh, I talked about these two gentlemen already. The one person I'd like to point out is uh, John Drobe. He's uh, below my smiley face there. John Drobe was uh, involved with me since the Corrienti days, and he was largely responsible to, to uh, work on the Corrienti Copper Project that was sold for about $860 million. So he's, uh, for me, he's probably one of the best uh, porphyry copper geologists that, that is out there. Next. Next slide, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the top guy here on the left, Roberto Ferrao, I talked to him about them already. Okay, so the company has two projects in it. Uh, one of them is called Cristal. And the other one is Escalonis. I will have Pat come in after. I will talk about Escalonis and then I'll have Pat come in and talk about Cristal. Cristal is actually the project that Pat found and discovered. So he, he, I always say it's a geological, uh, geophysical target, but I don't do uh, enough service by just sort of leaving it at that. So I thought it would be a good time for Pat to get on one of these uh, presentations and actually talk about Cristal a little bit more. I will just talk about Escalonis. So if you can flip to the Escalonis project, which is four or five pages further. Yeah, yeah. So Escalonis is um, 35 kilometers east of El Teniente, El Teniente being the largest copper deposit in the world. And this 35 kilometers is actually kind of an interesting distance in that uh, the great David Lowell, uh, who Pat actually worked with in the discovery of uh, Escondida, has come up with this idea that, that these porphyries in Chile would be about 35 to 40 kilometers away from each other. And that has to do with the thickness of the, of the crust of the earth. I, I have to admit that I don't actually quite understand how that works, but I know that that's the basics of the theory of David Lowell. So Escalonis, by some fluky coincidence, just happens to be 35 kilometers away from El Teniente. Uh, if you flip to the next one. Uh, yeah, so Escalonis has sort of a historical resource of about 750 million tons of about 0.4 equivalent, which makes it an interesting property, but not entirely good enough. So there has to be some stuff done, let's say, and that's and it's what I'll discuss a little bit here as to why we believe that this is such a great project. So if you flip for the next one. Ah, here, okay. This is kind of uh, the claim block that the Escalonis project sits in. Um, the orange, round orange deal is where the drilling mainly happened. There was 25,000 meters, and this is where the 750 million tons was discovered. If you see the blue one to the south of that super gene target, there's a target that is very obvious. It's a little steeper than the, uh, the, the area that was drilled, which is relatively flat. 
and nobody really touched it other than there was a fluky drill hole that went into it. But that area is will will be able to double the size of the Escalonis project. So there is so there's an easy, let's say, one and a half billion tons of ore sitting in that area. And then on top of that, there are three uh, aster anomaly targets to the north. Each of those is as big as Escalonis itself. So we have here a potential multi-billion ton uh, project discovery going on. So this this is one of the, you know, this is a cluster of, pro, of porphyries. When, when you can find one of those, you grab them as much as you can. They're very rare to come by, and every big discovery in, in Chile has been one of these cluster deposits. And once you start to drill them, they go very deep, so this will be a multi-billion dollar uh, target, let's say, for us. Um, if you go f switch again, uh, skip to the next one. I actually don't know what that looks like. Yeah, here, so you see here sort of where the um, uh, drilling was done. This is on the left side. Macho Amaria is the little cap that we're going to drill. Uh, this is about 500 by 1,000 meters in size. Um, uh, so, but it, let's go to the next slide and see if that's the one I'm focusing on. Yeah, here actually, this is actually shows you a picture of why the drilling did, happened where it was. So the, uh, the flat area with the drills is where they, they drilled off the porphyry and you see that, that yellow orange um, that's the extension. That's what we call Macho Maria. And then they just by fluke drilled one hole into it on the edge there. And it came up with about 0.6 copper up there. Um, on the other hand, there are also uh, SCARN targets on the project. Of, you know, the SCARN's around 1% plus. Uh, a little bit of work has been done on it. And those are actually targets that we need to follow up. So this is kind of a project that has multiple um, opportunities to really shine. Uh, could you go to the next one? Um, well, here you see uh, sort of like um, on the shallow, on the on the left, uh, sorry, on the right there, you see sort of an, int uh, an interesting intersection on the scarn. Could you go to the next one? Yeah, this is actually okay. This is where this becomes even more interesting is that you could see on the reddish color here on this is that the higher grade sits at the top of the deposit. And that has, and this is actually oxide. So there's 300 meters of this, of this deposit is actually the first 300 meters is oxide. And the Machu Amarillo's extension there is basically um, uh, to, the, to the right of this on this, on this, uh, on this uh, slide. So you could see that there is there is about close to 400 million tons of oxides at at about 0.39 copper. So this is actually a very very good oxide target. So it will be an SXEW uh, target in the future. And Macho Amarillo also has this oxide going further. So we can probably with the size of it, we can probably come up with another maybe 400 million tons of oxides there for a combined close to 800 million tons of oxides. And then, you know, maybe start uh, 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 hi hiring the cutoff grade and come up with a fantastic four or 500 million ton oxide deposit here that could be mined fairly cheaply with a fairly low capex. So this is kind of one of the focuses of our exploration program that we're going forward with. Um, let's go to the next slide. I'm, I'm, I'm running out of time here, I think. Yeah, see on the, uh, the northern uh, targets, uh, they have been sampled in the past and you can see that there is actually copper on those, uh, on those targets. So we know that there are porphyry systems, we know they have targets. So each one of those, as I said, is at least the size of of Escalonis itself. So each of them could be well over a billion tons. So this is going to be a, a multi-billion ton target here. Okay, next one. Um, 
Yeah, the um, um, we we're still private. We should be listed in the next, you know, three four weeks. It's been a very slow process, but you know, to date we're a uh, uh, a private company. Um, I I like to go back because I think I'm running out of time here. Uh, to Pat, if he can actually say a few things about the Crystal project. So if you f flip the slides back to Crystal, which is this, the uh, project we have in the north, and I'll get uh, Pat to sit here and talk about Crystal for a few minutes. Okay, thanks. Good night. Okay. Hi there, I'm, I'm Pat Burns, a uh, geologist. A uh, long time Latin American resident, I'm Canadian, but uh, I spent about 40 years in Chile. And as, as Hank said, was involved with the uh, Escondida discovery years ago. And I've had the good fortune to be involved in, in a few others as well. Now, I did, might just mention one, one minute on uh, Escalones. What really attracted me there was the, the possibility to, to increase the grade. I only see... At, if anything, 50% of that target has been looked at. So it's wide open as far as I'm concerned. And that's without considering the other three large anomalies in this cluster towards the north, any one of which could be as good or better uh, than Escalones itself. But since I'm here to talk about Cristal, um, let's go to, uh, to slide 17. The next one, I guess, if that's all right. And... Uh, what, what brought me up here was, was my uh, long association with, with Lowell uh, in Chile and working in the Porphyry Copper Belt for a number of years. Um, we zeroed in on this area some years ago. Um, it's right on the uh, continental scale West Fisher. Uh, that is where all of the major Porphyry Copper deposits in Chile and, and Peru are located. Uh, it actually has a cover on it, so it's not an obvious target but the cover has been partially eroded at the southern end, and you see what would be called a, just a classic porphyry copper uh, exposure. Uh, if you're looking for 20 features in a porphyry copper deposit to tell you there's one there, this would have 18 of them. And uh, it, it's just a, it's a fantastic target that has never been drilled. Uh, we're the small fish in, in the big ocean. We have BHP, uh, AMSA, or Anophagasta minerals, um, RTZ, uh, Anglo-American, all the biggies are there, and we're right in the middle. Uh, BHP did a few holes to the east and uh, northeast and southeast uh, a few years ago, uh, drilled into what would be considered the fringe or, or edge of one of these deposits, and we know there's copper at the southern end, uh, and then in, within our target area is a large geophysical anomaly that was not drilled by BHP. They recommended in their last report to us that they do some additional work there, uh, but they ended up changing management and handed the project back. And I had a fellow uh, who was a head geophysicist for Freeport at Grasberg in Indonesia take a look at it a few years ago, and he rehashed the data, and he said uh, this was a project that absolutely had to be drilled. It was exactly the type of target that uh, Freeport was looking for it and basically had a, a deep rooted system uh, along with these major structures which which uh, provide the the uh, source for the fluids to come up. Uh, so this target definitely needs to be drilled according to him. Um, and then the, the it's right where the deposit swings off in, into Peru and nearby RTZ recently made a discovery under the same ignimbrite cover, the same barren cover rocks uh, using geophysics, uh, and we're looking to do two or three holes there. But if we hit there, uh, we'll be gone. Uh, these these are the new types of targets that are coming up in Chile now as the near-surface ones have, have pretty much been discovered and picked over. So the drilling is going to be a bit deeper. They may be underground, uh, but block caving, but that's no problem. The grades are often 1% uh, or better. Uh, when I left Escondida, we had over a billion tons. Uh, today, that was 30 years ago. Today, we have 4 billion tons of reserves remaining, uh, running between 0.7 and over well over 1% copper uh, at depth. So these things go on forever. And as, as Hank mentioned, you're looking at clusters. 
Uh, just last, the last item to point out is that in almost every one of these deposits, the initial reserve figure uh, goes up by an amplitude of 50 to 100 or 300 percent over time as more ore is discovered uh, during the operation of the mine itself. Sorry, sorry Pat, we've, uh, we've run out of time and uh, we're going to have to uh, shut it down there for the, uh, the next presentation. But thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, we really appreciate it and, and uh, appreciate all those who attended. Uh, thank you all.